Hello again, everybody. Strategist here. Happy Halloween or All Hallows Eve to all those out there. And for this week's video, we're going to start delving into the classes. It's going to be slightly longer than normal as I'm just going to address a few general class things first, and then we'll dive into the first class, which for today's video is going to be Alchemist. Of something I would like to point out before we continue on is under initial proficiencies that it lists for class. If your class will make you train in the skill that you are already trained in, typically due to your background, though not required, you can select any other skill to become trained in. So as I mentioned for the races where it would be good to double up so that you can, uh, so that you can get an extra skill. If for some reason the ancestry or race that you really, really want will not let you do that with your class combination, you can just choose a background and the class half of it will let you choose another skill that you want. Continuing on, all this really here mentions class features. You get general feats, skill feats, class feats, ability boosts every five levels. Every five levels, you get four stats to boost by two, unless the stat is already 18 or higher, in which case you can only boost it by one, which means if you started with an 18 in the stat and every boost level you chose your highest stat, then without items or anything else, you could boost it all the way up to a 22 or a 6 mod, which is pretty useful. Skipping everything else, like I said, for today's video, we're going to be going into Alchemists. Alchemists have 8 plus your con mod per level. You don't roll for hit points in Pathfinder 2e. And looking up at the averages of all the classes, most everything's kind of an 8. There are 5 classes that do 8 four that do 10 and one that does 12 and two that do six. So a little over eight is about eight to a little over eight is about where we'd find our average breakdown. So alchemists, I'll say, have about average health per level. They have trained in perception and no class is worse than trained. So it kind of makes you wonder what the point is. Like legit. If you are not at least trained in a skill that you anticipate being sneaky in, there's no point. Unless there are a multitude of monsters that, in fact, aren't trained in perception, every class is at least trained in perception, and some of them start better than trained in perception. So, if everyone's special, then no one is, if you get what I'm saying, that's, that's the bottom of that. They are expert in two stats and only trained in one, which means they have two or as it stats, two saves that all are on the good track and one that is not on the good track. This is actually average for most every class. There are three classes that are in fact trained in two and only expert in one, those classes being Bard, Cleric, and Druid, and one class that is an expert in all three, that one being Monk. Everyone else is expert in two or trained in one, in which case you're really looking for what their weak save is. In this case, the weak save, if you do an alchemist, is will. You are good at fort, and you are good at reflex. Watch out for the guys going for your mental stats. That could come in slightly useful later. They, uh, they are an int, it is an int-based stat, and there are only two. There are only two classes that are int-based. Alchemist and wizard. Because they're an int-based stat, the class chooses the one stat that gets its boost. In this case, it would be in its key thing. So it's the only stat you're going to be able to max out if you choose this as your class. Continuing on, we see that they get a few advancements, but we can just kind of gloss over a bit of those so we can get to the crux of what the class is. In which case, you're an alchemist. Your crux is alchemy. Now, their math is slightly hard because they listed over different areas. Alchemy says that you would gain the alchemical crafting feat, even if you don't meet the prerequisites, and you get four common first-level alchemical formulas. However, and I will address these as they come up, due to other things that the class gives you, you actually end up with eight choices. They just broke it down to four, two, and two. In, no, I should rescind that. You get six choices, and two are given to you for free. So you end up with eight first level alchemical formulas. There are only like 24 alchemical formulas at level one. So you start with about, a, you start with a third. And even then a lot of those like bombs doing different elements and stuff like that. So you could trim out the variations you don't like and almost 
every type of bomber or every type of medic, so on and so forth, will kind of be the same. They'll just have slight differences at lower levels. You end up with a thing called Infuse Reagents, which is basically like this class's version of spell slots. So you get two choices to either use reagents in advanced or quick alchemy. Advanced says you do it in the morning. You, you basically make an alchemical item. It costs you no items and you get two items instead of one for doing it using this system. But the items will be expired at the end of the day. Quick alchemy only lets you generate one, but you get to do it as a one action thing. So you can generate it whenever you want. So as an alchemist, you're kind of torn between choosing to play like a wizard doing the advance and making things in the morning, or like a sorcerer, in which case you get to do them whenever you want kind of a thing. And really for that comparison, it's not a proper comparison. That's more compared to older style RPGs. They've done a bunch of things different to spellcasters. I'll address them when their classes come up. But if you're used to Pathfinder 3.5, not necessarily, you know, something new like D&D 5e, this is how I'm going to have to address it. So that's basically what your two choices are. Now, if you're infused reagents, you get reagents equal to your level plus your int modifier, which means at the beginning, your intelligence is your biggest gain. You're only going to be level one. And it's not until your int modifier and levels that your levels start making more of a hit. But even by that point, your int is such a gigantic feature that it's required. So... I know some people would suggest, hey, don't always in your videos try to word everything as if you're min-maxing a character or as if the DM is trying to oppose you. But since it is directly attuned to the amount of reagents you get for your core feature, you're going to want to max out your int. You're going to want it to be 18 and possibly if you're willing to lose out on a bit of his stats at every five levels, you're going to want int to be the thing you're increasing. So what this means is by 10, your int will be five, which still puts it at 50 or 50% 50 of the gain you're gaining from levels. So one third of your total reagents will have been achieved just by choosing int twice after it was already 18, even though it is a slower rate. Just because of how core it is. As I stated, advanced alchemy lets you do anything in your out of your advanced alchemy level or lower that's in your formula book except your advanced alchemy level is equal to your level. So it should just say your level or lower or your class level or lower, but they took out the term class level as far as I'm aware. You can make a batch of two of that item. These items have the infused trait and remain potent for 24 hours into, or until your next daily preparations, whichever comes first. As I stated, quick is you can do it immediately whenever you want. You don't do it during your daily preparations but they only last for like a round. There are features later that would expand this, which are particularly useful for people who do more bombs and other things, but that, that's, that's what your core breakdown is on it. Um, the thing I would like to point out, slightly poor verbiage. It says you can make an alchemical item of your level or lower that's in your formula book. Doesn't necessarily say that you draw from your formula book. It's kind of a, an argument over the details. No DM would allow this to happen, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the book has to be in your presence. I would never say that that's a ruling you should go with. I'm just pointing out a fact that saying that it needs to be in your formula book doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be in your presence because it doesn't say that you're drawing it from the formula book using the advanced alchemy system. Like I said, I'm just nitpicking there. Formula book, you start with a standard formula book where 10 silver pieces are less, as detailed on page 290, and it contains formula for two common first level alchemical items. That's what brings us from eight to, or from four to six. I don't know why it wasn't just all put together, but you get another two. And we'll be choosing a field here in a second, which will choose two more for you. Each time you gain a level, you can add the formulas for two common alchemical items to your book. Blah, blah, blah. It's the wizard spell thing. You learn them automatically. It is possible to find or buy additional formulas or to invent them yourself with the inventor feat. I'm not going to be addressing the inventor feat right now. I have read it. It's 
I don't like the way it's worded. I really don't like the way it's worded, but that's not the purpose of this right now. Research fields. So this is what you do is you choose what subclass of alchemist you would you would like to be. The bomber, the shirigan, the, the surgeon, the medic, or the mutagenist. Bomber tends to be, if you're wanting to do damage, has a whole hell of a lot of things that go for it. If you're needing to be a backup medic, not a lot of the medic choices are all that great. And the mutagenist is basically, it is what it is. They eventually have some really good things, but some of the, the mutagens aren't all that good. Namely because they hurt you like Quicksilver. At least I think, I think it was Quicksilver. Just really weird how that one works. However, what I would point out is the details because I only addressed the general idea. If you choose bomber, you choose you start the formula for two first level alchemical bombs in your formula book. Choose two bombs. However, the extra benefit if you choose bomber, when throwing an alchemical bomb with a splash trait, you can deal splash damage to only your primary target instead of the usual splash area. That's pretty useful. This means that you can throw near an ally without hitting them. It does not state that it has to be an alchemical item you made with advanced alchemy or one that you made. It just says when throwing an alchemical bomb with a splash trait. So that's something to be aware of. Advanced is how you can generate them and quick. It's how you can generate them for free per day. But as long as you're willing to put in the money, you can have a massive stockpile of these things, either crafting yourself or otherwise. However, I wouldn't have too many on you at once. Don't want them all to detonate. Surgeon, or chirurgeon, I'm never going to be able to pronounce that right, says you get to choose two formulas, Lesser Antidote, Lesser Anti-Plague, or Lesser Elixir of Life. The Lesser Elixir of Life is your heal, and Lesser Antidote, or Lesser Anti-Plague, Antidote, Anti-Plague, Disease or Poison. It, it is what it is. The, the Elixir of Life is a really good thing. The other two are slightly niche, but you get them for free, so that's good. I would like to point out, though, that trend right there is going to continue for all of the uh, the medics upgrades. I'm just going to call it the medic. For all the medics upgrades, which I feel is a bit of a letdown. As long as your proficiency rank in medicine is trained or better, if you're going this, you're going to get medicine, you can attempt a crafting check instead of medicine check for any of medicine's untrained and trained uses. This is good up till train, though. It doesn't say that you get to use crafting for master or legendary uses. So it helps you at the beginning, but it doesn't go all the way. Which again, seems to be a thing that happens with Medic. This is almost kind of pointless. If you're wanting to get to legendary benefits or anything like that, you're just going to want them in medicine. So at the end of the day, if your medicine's already that high, this secondary benefit doesn't help you. Mutagenis, as I said earlier, you get um, two free mutagens in addition to the other formulas. Also, if you can gain the benefit of any mutagen, even if it was not specifically brewed for you. Whenever your proficiency rank for simple weapons increases, your proficiency rank for unarmed attacks increases to the same rank unless it's already better. That's kind of good. If you're going mutagenist, you're going to be doing things that might not necessarily allow you to be using weapons a lot. So it would make sense that you would have to be able to train up unarmed as well. But also you don't necessarily need to be like mutated for this to work. It's always good to have extra benefits to attacks. If you find yourself disarmed, this allows you to fight bare knuckle brawl, bare knuckle brawl style with no penalty, which is pretty useful. It ranks up the same as your regular weapons do. All right, now we're going to be going into feats. General feats, skill increases, ability boosts, ancestries. No, we're not. First, we are going to discover, we are going to discuss the rest of the class abilities. I misunderstood when I read the feats. So at level five, and that's what the rest of these are. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm glossing over these, but you get feats. You get feats when you get feats. I'll address feats when you get them. First proper ability, field discovery. This is something, this is like the upgrade to your bomber, surgeon, or medic, or mutagenist skill. If you're at a bomber, when using the advanced alchemy, which is you do it in the morning and you make two for one of your things, you can use a batch of reagents to make any three bombs instead of just two of the same bomb. This has double effect, and both effects are really good. 
One, instead of two bombs, you get three bombs. Extra 50% on your reagents. That alone is such a useful gain, particularly for things you're doing in the morning. It means you can use less points in the morning so you can have more points later for quick if you so choose. Because if you use one, if you, instead of doing two points in the morning for four, you do one point in the morning for three, and you can blow one point in later on for one that you need as you need it. You have still done two points and gotten four things out of it. So that's really useful. The other thing that's really good about this, though, is you can create any three bombs. You don't have to get two of the same bomb. You're not tied down. This allows you to prepare ahead of time with a bit of variety, which is always a good choice to have. If you chose to be the medic earlier or your team needed you to be the medic, you can use advanced alchemy to prepare your elixir life and create three elixirs with each batch of reagents instead of two. This is also a good one. Same idea as the bombs, except for it's only elixirs of life, which isn't that much of a penalty because it's your, it's your potions. It's your lesser heal potions. The other elixirs are more niche than just healing people. So that being said, doing more damage would generally be preferred to healing more people. But if no one else is being medic, it's not a bad thing to be getting. Mutagenist, you can get any three mutagens instead of just two of the same. Holds the same idea as the bombs. So two, you can get three, good, and it says any two, or any three. Gives you variety for how to prepare for the day. These two are really good. Medic is as good as it can be for what you can do with it, unfortunately. Alchemical Weapon Expertise just levels up your weapons, and again, if you chose Mutagenist, this levels up your unarmed as well. Iron Will, your mental defenses, your proficiency ranks for Will increases to Expert, which means what was your weak save is now leveled up to a slightly higher save. But generally by this point, everyone else has already leveled up their things to what's going to be beyond it. Notice how Alchemical Weapon has now also leveled up to Expert. This is about the time that people are shoring up their weaknesses so you're still just going to be matched with the people that you were already weak against anyways in that regard, if only for a few levels. Perpetual Infusions at level 7 says, whenever you do Quick Alchemy, you create two first-level batch of infused reagents. Um, you can create two items without... I worded that wrong. You can get two items for one batch of infused reagents using Quick. So this gives you some extra numbers that you're losing on Quick. However, from what we understand from Quick, you still only get them for one round. So what this is basically doing, and I'll go into their specifics, but if you're a bomber, you do one action to get two bombs, you spend your other two actions throwing the bombs, because in a round, they're not going to be working anymore. So a good ability, just be aware that if you're doing perpetual infusions, you might end up either losing items or need to be prepared to throw them all at once. If you are a bomber, the items you can choose are limited to Lesser Acid Flask, Lesser Alchemist, Fire, Bottle Lightning, Ice, Tanglefoot Bag, and Thunderstone. Basically, your gener generic elements a and two debuffs. These aren't bad. I would choose the element ones, but again, you, you can choose this every time you do the ability. So that, that's always pretty good. Like I said, be prepared to throw out both of the bombs, though, because it didn't change the fact, despite the name Perpetual, of Quick Alchemy saying... Uh, remains potent only until the start of your next turn, not even until the end of your next turn. So be prepared to throw everything as fast as possible. This probably shouldn't be called Perpetual. It should be called something else. I get why they said it, because... Oh, no, sorry. Without spending a batch of reagents. I did, in fact, read that poorly. I've got the notes. I'm trying not to look down at my notes and definitely screwed that one up. The reason why it's worded perpetual is that you can just keep doing it. So you have unlimited first level items. However, comma, my other point still stands. You're making two items. You better be prepared to throw them or else they're not go they're going to be wasted. But you're not really wasting anything. Just be prepared for the idea that you have two items. Medic, you get lesser antidote and lesser anti-plague. This is not a benefit. This is not a benefit at all. The ability to freely make a buff item that only works if your team has been diseased or poisoned. Whoopie-doo. 
I know why they didn't want to do the heal potion because then you have unlimited heals and that kind of makes some other classes pointless. But they needed to have given you something else. They needed to have had a different choice or something. This does not help the medic at all. Woo. It didn't cost you any points. Oopa. It's not that much of, a, of an upgrade. Mutagenist gets to choose their mutagens. It's as strong as their mutagens are. Same thing as with the bombs. Useful, useful, medic. Medic gets a consolation prize for this uh, ability. A chemical expertise is your alchemist class DC is increased to expert. Without going into every class, if you just use this as a alchemist versus alchemist thing, you leveled up your weak defense, and then with you had a two level window before their thing made your weak defense be weak again. And also medic versus medic. Uh, this basically brings them tied with your strong saves for a bit of time. So I feel like this is going to be a core thing for a bunch of classes that there's going to be a window of time where everyone's DCs to hit people have increased, but not everyone's strong saves have increased. So at this point, as stupid as it sounds, by buffing class DC and buffing your weak save, what you've really kind of done is nerf the two strong saves. Because for a period of time, now all saves are matching the class DCs, if that makes sense. Because everything is equal to your level. It's just how much of a bonus you get. So you just shored up the weaknesses. And again, this particular comparison is only alchemist versus alchemist. But I think, I think I'm conveying the idea that this isn't helping too much. Now, chemical expertise is what we just covered. Alertness, your proficiency for perception increases to expert, and this is the only time it increases off of just in-class abilities. Yay, you went from trained to expert. You've now matched with every other, what a bunch of other classes had at level one. Yay. Double brew. When using quick alchemic action, instead of spending one batch of infused reagents to create a single item, you can spend up to two batches to make up to two alchemical items as described in that action. This saves you nothing. I 100% I do not understand the purpose of this. Let me break this down to you. On the surface, the idea is that this one only applied to first level alchemical items. So that made it free. Whereas double brew would be used for higher level ones. You could make two of them, right? but all you're doing is like saving yourself one action that round. You're still having to spend the two batches of reagents. So you're using your temporary per day resource, which remember is only level plus ability score. By this point, you have four plus, four plus nine, so you have 13. You're burning through your reagents faster and all this has done is saved you one action that round. You've, you've, you've made the same amount of things because it costs two batches to get double the items. Double the cost, double the items, but for one action. They don't have to be the same, so you do have that going for you. Or if you need to throw out a bomb and heal someone, maybe? But I think it shouldn't have cost two. I think Double Brew might have been better served as an upgrade to Perpetual Infusions. Not to make it free, but to get twice the items out. Remember, this is off of quick. It still is burned in one round anyways. You're not getting a whole hell of a lot out of this. You've got one round to do it, which means for Double Brew to be effective, it has to be your first action in the round so that you can get the two items to use both the items that round. Quick is a weird limitation, and this upgrade, I think, kind of isn't as strong as either the writers or some people might take it for. I, it's a good ability. It does have a purpose. I just, I'm not feeling what I think it's trying to make me feel about it. At 11th level, you get Juggernaut. Your proficiency for Fortitude increases to Master, so now after two more levels, one of your saves is finally, your strong save is finally above 
the class DC of your own class. Your per when you become master, you basically get for evasion. Whenever you get a success, you get a crit success instead. So, and that, as far as I'm aware, that's just core for masters. Anytime you get a save to master, you basically get that saves version of evasion. As far as I'm aware. It took two levels though. It took two levels for your good save to outpace your class ability finally. So there's this weird window in time where alchemists between at level nine and level 10 have a 10% easier chance of hitting likewise leveled alchemists. So it's, it's, it's a weird gap, but one that you should be aware of as a player, because normally up to this point, if you saw an alchemist, you might've gotten the idea not to throw something that required a fort save, if you have any at all. And this is where your window is. Conversely, if you are a different class who also leveled up their DCs at level nine, there's a two level window where you can aim for alchemists. They do make up for it by getting evasion at level 11, but there's a two window where it's 10% easier for you to affect an alchemist. Perpetual potency. When, uh, when you use quick alchemy to create more powerful items with no cost, you basically, you can now do higher level things with quick for free. Basically kind of half what double brew should have been, but whatever. The moderate versions of the bombs, upgrade to damage, good. Moderate version of the things that are super niche, consolation prize, or moderate version of the mutagens, also good. But remember, this is allowing you to use quick alchemy. It's just the same thing that you could do with perpetual infusions. Now, my question is, my thought on this, perpetual infusions declares you can create two first level alchemical items without spending a batch of infused. Perpetual doesn't necessarily directly point out that you can. It says your perpetual infusions improve, allowing you to use it to create more powerful items with no cost. I believe Rita's intended you get two items out of this. It does say it improves perpetual infusions and it points out specifically the no cost, but does not specifically point out the two items for one cost. The reason why I'm not certain on this is because if this does let you get two items for no cost, then double brew is utterly pointless. Makes no sense other than to do things that was, that weren't in your core choices, but you chose them already. Like that's your defining feature. So double brew becomes weird niche items. In which case, if you're needing to do weird niche items in a weird niche niche situation for two different things, which was the strength of double brew, what situation are you in? That is a weird non ability. And either perpetual potency gives you the two items, which I believe is possibly intended and double brew is pointless or this only gives you one item. I believe it gives you two. It is an upgrade to perpetual infusions. This is what I would work on. This is what I would DM as, that it gives you two. But then it just even more makes double root pointless in my opinion. Yeah, you get two, two levels before it becomes literally pointless. Just seems weird to me. Uh, greater field discovery. This is the upgrade to your field discovery, basically a direct upgrade to your abilities. If you chose bomber earlier, you, instead of having a five foot radius, you have a 10 foot radius and spoiler alert. There's a feat later that normally gives you five to 10 foot radius, but bombers get 15 foot radius, which is really useful, especially considering anyone can generally take that feat to get the 10 foot radius, but only bombers get the 15 foot radius. Now, normally the 15 foot radius would be a bad idea. You would be hitting your friends more. But if you're in a situation where you're only going for like, say one enemy, you still have the core bomber ability to just get rid of the radius anyways and just hit whoever you want. Really good to be able to choose 15 foot radius or low or only the one target. Medic can use quick alchemy to create any type of elixir of life and the creature drinking that elixir then gains Maximum hit points possible instead of rolling to determine. This is good, but again, 
it's so, so very little for what a medic needs to be doing. You're doing quick alchemy. A bomber is chucking the bomb immediately. Makes sense. A medic is throwing a heal at people. For this to, for maximum health, what you are now having to do is get close to someone, give them the healing, and in one turn, and by the end of, by the beginning of your next turn, they need to drink the potion. So if their turn is after your turn or before your turn, they have to drink it right then and there. I don't know why I specified before or after your turn. It would be their next turn. They need to drink it, like, basically immediately, or the maximized potion is maximized water. This does not help anybody. If that person that you gave the potion to gets stunned in that round, your maximized potion is gone. It's pointless. It's such a shame that this quick alchemy thing, because of its very nature, kind of hinders medics. I would, I would almost suggest a house rule underneath the medic field discovery that their quick alchemy lasts one extra round. Just to give them some time to give the potion to someone and maybe let them get a drink. It, like I said, mutagens, you're doing it yourself. Bombs, you're throwing it to hit people. Medicine requires teamwork. You're making potions. Kind of not that good. Even if you go with the idea of, oh, it's an elixir. It's not really a potion. Well, I'm going to throw it on them. Eh. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not really, I'm not really sold on the medic alchemist. I'm, I'm just really not. I do like the idea of maximized hit points, though. That by itself is really good. What this would be used for, what this would be used for is out of combat healing. Out of combat healing, maximized hit points. You're doing quick. Do it as, oh wait, that's right. You don't get for free the heal potions. So it's kind of weird because what you'd probably want to do is get the most amount of potions. You do them for advanced. But this only applies to quick. So if you're a medic, you're wanting to not do advanced. You're wanting the lesser amount for quick to get maximized healing. Like, like I said, it goes against itself, the weird way the medic works in this. And this just gonna address this just addresses what additive is and infused. Basically, there are gonna be some feats that we're gonna discuss later or traits. And what it is is if it's additive two, you add it to the thing, and that's the new level. Infuse, which we already discussed, is basically a timer on how long it lasts. So on and so forth. Mutagenist. If you imbibe another mutagen while you are under the effects of mutagen that you created, you gain the benefits and drawbacks of both mutagens at once. Despite the fact that they both have the polymorph trait, it will not normally function together. It is what it is. If you have two mutagens that you want really, really, really want to mix together, yay. Go ahead and mix them together. I'd like to point out a weird situation, though. If you imbibe another mutagen while well, under the effects of a mutagen that you created. So if I make a mutagen and drink it, I could drink someone else's mutagen and get both effects. But if I drank someone else's mutagen first and then drank mine, I could not mix them. The way it is worded, if you imbibe another mutagen while under the effects of a mutagen that you created, you need to drink your mutagen first. The only reason why I point this out is the earlier mutagenist pointed out that you could get the benefits of mutagens that aren't meant for you. Just remember, you need to drink the one that you made first for this effect to even work. Also, you get the drawbacks of both. So, slight mitigating factor. Light armor becomes even better. Weapon specialization, you deal two additional damage to weapons and unarmed attacks in which you are an expert. Damage increases to three if you're a master and four if you're a legendary. By normal class upgrade, without feats or anything, you're never going to get to master or legendary. So this is a plus two. You don't have to choose it. So it's not like it's not like you're giving up anything, but just be aware. Unless you take a feat to make this ability useful, this ability is utterly pointless. You don't go to master and or legendary. So you're going to have to invest some some type of resource to make that better. Alchemical Alacrity at level 15 says when using the quick alchemy action, you can spend the three batches of reagents to make up the three alchemical items. This has the exact same problem as Double Brew. Who is this helping? At this point, this is literally not helping anybody. Quick Alchemy takes an action. You have until the beginning of your next turn 
to get rid of all your items or else they're pointless. And you've made three, but you only get two more actions that turn. Which means at this point, somebody other than you is using their actions to get your items. Because you're, you, 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 you get what I'm saying? Either you're throwing multiple grenades. Really, this works. This is just shitty for a medic. But mutagenist isn't needing to do that many mutagens. There are other things, I admit. You, like, you can make utility items. It's not restricted to your subclass abilities. But at the end of the day, there's so many items this doesn't work with. What, what is the point? What is, why didn't they upgrade advanced alchemy? Why, I do not understand why all of these abilities go off of quick to such a degree that you are literally running out of time to use them and they are all boiling and fizzling away into the ether before your very eyes because you don't have the time to do it. There's not enough time in the day to use these items. Again, if you're going with the medicine thing, someone else is now having to use an action on their turn to possibly get it from you because you can only have two extra actions. What's happening to the third one? It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they keep upgrading quick and they don't really show any love to advanced, which is so weird since it's a core ability and they just basically ignore it. You get evasion at 15th level. So they finally upgraded evasion to being a strong one. So to point out, class got strong at nine. So it negated all of your, your, good, your good saves. Then two levels later at 11, Fortitude got good, but then four levels later, Reflex finally catches up. That means there, there is a six level gap on Reflex to beat the hell out of a freaking alchemist. Because I guarantee you somewhere within that window, anyone who does things that would require Reflex saves like a wizard probably already leveled up their class ability. So there's a six level thing where your good save became a weak save. That's a lot of time to have a weak save. Be aware of that, that for that period of time between nine and 15, you now need to start avoiding fireballs and other alchemists that are throwing things that are likely to have a reflex save. But <laughs> I would maybe switch those two. Like an alchemist has a thing that is bomber. They have a thing revolved around throwing things with AOEs. Why is an alchemist, like, not learn how to become evasion first? You could say, oh, they drink their potions, so fortitude, but they always willingly fail their own potions. So even in lore, that doesn't make sense. An alchemist is not fort saving his own potions. Th these should have been switched, in my opinion. You're going to chat and argue with me on that, but that's a lot of time for an alchemist to bomb the hell of an alchemist. And it makes no sense why an alchemist would not be prone to evading fireballs or explosions. Alchemy explodes, people. Alchemy explodes. Uh, do, 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 do. Level 17, two levels later, Alchemy Master upgrades again, so the class DC is now matched. It's now matched again. So you have two windows. You have two levels where the numbers aren't the same. Again, you need, I think some of these saves needed to be higher or something for them to be good saves. It's kind of weird how it's always a two step off. But admittedly, but for your saves being master, you get evasion on them. But because the DC of them attacking you has also gone up by two, you're only likely to see succeed, what, 50, 55% of the time? I mean, evasion is really good on that, all things being even but your numbers are never high. You just always come back to a weird coin flip. And before you had this, you were worse than a coin flip. You were down to like 40, 45% before you got evasion. Perpetual perfection. Greater versions of the bombs. Yes. Greater versions of mutagens. Yes. Greater versions of antidote and anti-plague. They hate medics. <laughs> You have now chosen a subclass and all three of your major subclass upgrades as a medic is just, you have better antidotes. You don't heal better. You have better antidotes. Kick ass. Good job. All your heals cost money. This is off of quick anyways. If you're doing the quick system, you're already, we, we've already pointed out that the, the, the action economy doesn't make sense for a medic. 
for what they have to do. You might as well let them throw out heals since their action economy for healing isn't good. Think about this. You have to use quick alchemy. You lose it in a round and all you got was an antidote. You couldn't even heal the poor bastard on your team. You cured him of some poison. Why, why, why do you have to waste so much time as a medic when everyone else is like, bombs away, boom, bombs away, boom. Because at this point, you're a greater versioning bombs, throwing out two of them. I'm ignoring the one that gives you three because I have no clue why. You throw out the two bombs and they're bigger bombs. This one, you have to make an action to make the thing, get to the guy who needs it and give it to him. And if you don't pull it off and around, he's not healed. You got to blow an entire another turn doing it. No. And at 19 level, you get light armor mastery. So your light armor and unarmored defense increase to master. So that's good. Now, we have a few selection of feats that we are going to go through. And some of these are better than others. I'm going to gloss over some of these and just really home in on the ones that are not good or bad. A chemical familiar. You get a familiar. It's as good as a familiar ever is. If a familiar is good in this game, get a familiar. Familiars are familiars. Always get a familiar if you can. It's a free second character that can help you do things. Just try to keep it alive. In this case, we'd like to also point out the familiar uses your intelligence modifier to determine its perception, acrobatics, and stealth. Your int should be your highest thing. So what you are doing is overriding whatever your familiar stat is for those particular skills with your highest stat. These are all good things to have. I would suggest this at some point. If we find a thing where you're like, I don't have a, I don't, I don't know what I want to choose. Double back and maybe get familiar. It's not a bad choice. Alchemical savant. When crafting skill used to identify alchemy, you can identify it in a single action as opposed to 10 minutes. You're blowing one of your limited choice feats to save 10 minutes. It lets you identify something in combat. Why are you drinking something in combat if it wasn't something you made? Or I should say something that you didn't buy. Like at this point, you're stealing from an enemy to identify in combat what the alchemical item is. And then if it's one that you think might be appropriate, you're going to drink it. No, you're just going to drink one you make. You're an alchemist. You make this shit yourself. There's no reason to be saving 10 minutes. That is a stupid feat. Far lobber. When you throw bombs, they get 30 feet instead of 20 feet for the range increment. Do you like hitting people at range? Yes. Ta-da. Quick bomber. As an action, you can throw a bomb and draw it in the same action. If you're bombing, you're going to want to do this. It lets you throw more bombs. You don't have to waste time trying to get them out. This does point out a weird thing. If you don't take Quick Bomber, then Quick Alchemy makes no sense for alchemists. Unless you get to count them as being in your pocket or already being in your hand, which maybe, but you had to use a hand to make it, so it'd be on the ground possibly? I don't know. Weird situation. But yes, Quick Draw is always good for ranged people. It just always is. Uh, second levels, uh, Poison Resist. It's Poison Resist. It does what it says. Revivifying mutagen. You can metabolize a mutagen to heal yourself. So you, if you have a mutagen, you get rid of all of its duration and you heal yourself for 1d6 hit points for every two items levels of the mutagen. This is ungodly powerful for a mutagenist and I don't know why they hate medics. A mutagenist can just make unlimited mutagens. Do the quick thing for no cost one action. You would then get to imbibe the two things. You have the mutagens. Maybe only imbibe one, depending upon how the action economy goes. I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. And then immediately consume it for health. This is admittedly far stronger out of combat because you can just always say I'm at full health out of combat. But the ability to immediately say after combat that you're at full health is an ungodly powerful ability that the medic cannot do. Because the medic can't do heals for free, but the mutagenist can heal himself for free. Weird. Smoke bomb, free action. Um, your bombs can also create fog clouds. It's okay. 10 foot range. You have to lower the level of your bomb to do so, so less damage for a 10 foot wide fog cloud. 
I wouldn't throw them everywhere. Remember, this could also penalize your allies just as much as it penalizes your enemies. But it lasts for one minute. And it's useful. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, if you're a mutagenist, I wouldn't say do that over this. But if you're a bomber, and these are your three options, uh, smoke bomb is okay. If you're a medic, none of these are okay. Go back and grab a familiar. Because the game hates medics at low levels. In high levels. In all levels. Calculated splash. When you throw an out chemical bomb with a splash, you can cause it to deal splash damage equal to your int modifier instead of the normal amount. Yes, if you throw bombs, you're going to need this. I'm not scrolling all the way to where the bombs are, but they have what their bonus range thing is. And it's like plus one, plus two, and at very high levels, it gets a plus three or plus four. This is a low-level feat that just throws it to your int modifier plus four. So you automatically are just stronger than the highest things. And then when you get your int modifier to five, you are above what the class does for its freaking uh, splash damage. So yes, yes, you want this. Efficient alchemy. When spending downtime to craft alchemical items, immediately the rest of this is wholly kind of not really important. This comes down to, does your DM do downtime? If he doesn't do downtime, don't take the downtime feat. If your DM does downtime and you use the downtime, take the downtime feat. That's really it. It's either good or pointless. Pointless. That being said, since those are the only ones, or no, there is Enduring Alchemy, between those two, I would take Calculating Splash. But we do have Enduring Alchemy. When you use Quick Alchemy to create an alchemical tool or elixir, it remains potent until the end of your next turn, instead of losing its potency at the start of your next turn. You need this feat for a medic. Like, like this isn't even a you should take this. This is a thing that medics should have had from the beginning. Why is this a feat? If you are not a medic, and you, or if you are a medic and you don't take this, Utterly pointless. This feat is required for the get three items in one go to even work. Like, this is kind of a required feat for as stupid as it is. Not really useful at low level, but maybe at some higher point, you're going to want to grab this feat. I would still possibly suggest calculated splash for bombers. But if you're not a bomber, enduring alchemy for your mutagens and heal. That, that's literally the breakdown of that. Do you bomb? Get the bomb one. If you don't bomb, get this one. Maybe you want the downtime. It's this is goofy. Combine elixirs as a free action allows you to mix two elixirs into one elixir. This causes so many is this how the rule works situations. I cannot begin to go into all of them. You mix them into one concoction. For things like a mutagenist and other people where you are drinking things and you can have the benefits of Two at once, does this mean you can have up to four? If it is no, because it is per elixir, not per concoction, what does this do for you then? Does it save you one action for drinking the second one? What, what, what kind of is the point? There is one useful situation for this, especially considering this is a free action, and that is to mix two potions two slightly weaker potions to be stronger than your strongest potion. But at this point, in order to pull this off effectively, you have to do the quick action to make... Oh, wait, no, you can't because you can't do the nice free one. So you have to do an action. You have to do a regular heal potion that costs reagents, lower the level, but also do another reagent to make it into one. So you've done... It's a free, and you give it to them like, how do I word this? There are so many things that draw on the medic's action economy as to not make any of this ever make sense that there is a window in there for combined elixirs to make powerful, more powerful healing effects. But you are now still having to go through your reagents because they don't get to do the heal ones for free. So, you're burning through your limited use, essentially, spell slots at a prodigious rate when, for the same amount of material, you could have just done two different heal potions at, a, at the stronger level and healed for more. So, this feat for medics is just a, do you want to save time or do you want to save resources? Doesn't really make sense. For the mutagenist, though, I mean, yeah, hell, either you mix two 
or and you can get four, or you can't, in which case don't take it. So yeah, either it's really good, depending upon your situation, or it's not that good. You have to work that out with your DM. Debilitating Bomb is the same as the Smokes thing from earlier, except it lets you lower the levels to apply debuffs. Your debuffs are Dazzle, Deafen, Flat-Footed, or 5-Foot Size Penalty to Speeds. In combat, the enemy is not likely to be running away, so negative 5-Foot Speed doesn't really help you too much. Flat-Footed is okay. It's, it's, it's pretty good. I'm not saying there's nothing good against that. Deafened is only really kind of good versus Wizards and Sorcerers, assuming Deafen still makes them lose out on casting verbal spells. But Dazzled, Dazzled's a pretty good one. I would throw this for days just to dazzle a guy. Remember, Dazzled has a chance of making them not do their turns. So slightly less damage to make your opponent possibly not do their turn or do an action in their turn. That's really good. I'd, I'd be willing to give up a few damages. And this is a free action once per round to do one of your bombs. So if you do the thing where you make two bombs, you throw out one to debuff the enemy, and you throw out another one to do slightly more damage. It's really good. Directional bombs. Basically, this turns the AoE from a radius into a cone, and that's utterly pointless. Utterly pointless. The idea of area is you always want as much as possible. Hear me out. I know this is going to sound goofy. You always want as much as possible to try to affect as many people as possible. The idea being you might not want to hit your, your, your allies, but the level one ability says you can make it so that there is no area. Like you can just turn off the area so that you don't hit your allies. So the one case that directional bombs comes in useful is you want to hit an enemy, not hit an ally, but hit an enemy behind your enemy. Like it, it, it does no good if you're trying to make it to where you don't hit your ally because there's a level one for free ability that already made it so you didn't hit your ally. And I would like to point out the cone goes backwards from the guy you directly hit. You don't get to choose the direction of this cone. So, no. Choose a circle and just aim a little bit left of your ally. Just don't aim at your ally. This is a pointless feat. This is utterly pointless. I don't know why that's even there. Feral mutagen. And it's, it's okay. It's, it's pretty useful. Uh, when you do any, whenever you do the mutagens, you get the deadly trait, which basically means you can do the extra D10. I think it only applies to crits, but I'm not, not a uh, hundred on that right now. Cause I haven't read that since t like 12 videos ago. And your, your, your size goes up. Your damage die goes up. You, you basically do more damage. You get hit more. It is what it is. If you're a mutagenist, you're probably already going to be going for that. You didn't need me to tell you why that would be good. You're already modifying your body to hit people. If you're doing a mutagenist to not do physical combat or melee combat, then that one doesn't make sense. That's what that comes down to. Do you do melee combat? Yes. This lets you do it more betterer. <laughs> so, of course, you would be taking it. Powerful alchemy. When you use quick alchemy to create an alchemical item that allows a saving throw, you can change this DC to your class DC. I mean, yes. If it's something that already has a DC, then yeah, you'd want to set it to the highest DC possible. But there are a lot of utility things that the alchemist has that these don't really even apply to. So be aware of that. Depending upon what you're doing, powerful alchemy doesn't help you. If you are, despite everything I've said thus far, a medic, increasing the DC doesn't help you because it didn't increase the amount you healed. Your allies aren't going to save. If you're creating things like smoke sticks, is creating an effect on the field. It's it's not helping. So if you have something, if you use a lot of DCs, grab the thing that uses a lot of DCs. Sticky bomb's really good. Free action, like as we've seen before. You mix an additive to make your bomb's contents a creature that takes a direct hit, also takes persistent damage, equal to another the same type as a bomb splash damage. It If it already deals persistent damage, combine the two amounts. Remember, we already had the thing earlier to increase the splash damage to whatever your modifier was. At this point, probably around four, maybe approaching five, depending upon what shenanigans might come out in later books. So the ability to just have a dot on your opponent is always a good one. You do slightly less direct damage, but how much less? Like you're giving up, what, a D6 to do a guaranteed plus four every round for a couple rounds? So. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, that's good. That's above average. Your your DPS has only gone up in that case. I would suggest Sticky Bomb. Uh, Elastic Mutagen, really, really not good. This uh, only works with a Quicksilver Mutagen, and Quicksilver Mutagen requires you to take, like, double your level in damage whenever you drink it. So you're not drinking it that often. And all it does is give you some slight abilities. Good. Fantastic. I wouldn't suggest this, even if for some reason you have a Quicksilver build. I don't think I would... I mean, no, I take that back. Only if, for some reason, you're doing a Quicksilver build. But I don't see too many people doing a Quicksilver build because they're likely to die because it does a lot of damage to you when you drink it. It does get mitigated at level 20 where it won't, will no longer damage you, I don't think, but still. Expanded Splash is finally the feat we saw earlier where 5 foot radius becomes 10 foot radius. And if you mix this with the thing from earlier, it is now a 15 foot radius. There you go. 15 foot radius. Of course, you're taking it if you're doing bombs. Greater debilitating bomb. None of these are good. This is, you need debilitating bomb, which had some useful things. Dazzle. Dazzle or daze, whichever one it was. And this adds on some lists that aren't good. 10 foot status penalty to speed. Only really useful if someone's running away or running at you. And you'd have to, what, keep doing it? Like, I don't know. This weird type of thing, because remember how short your range penalty is. You know what I'm saying? It's not really going to be that good. Clumsy and feeble or stupefied, one. If these stack, then yes, that's a good thing. But each of these is like, the, the number is like the debuff or is the modifier, if that makes sense. One is such a little thing as to be pointless. If these don't stack, then these are pointless. If they do stack, then yeah, of course, take them. Keep, in, keep stupefying someone until you stupefy them to a million. But I'm assuming they don't stack. It doesn't say anything here about them being able to stack. So this is a stupid upgrade. It's really stupid. Merciful Elixir. The Elixir of Life attempts to counteract one fear effect or one effect imposing a paralyzed condition on the drinker. If you're a medic, then yes, take this. You make a heal that heals slightly less, but you remove one full fear effect or you remove the paralyzed condition from the drinker. At this point, you're, you're, you're this far into the class. You, you, you really, your group needs a medic. You might as well be able to cure as much, as many as you can. Only issue is only one around, so that kind of sucks. But, eh. You can do this with a cheapo one, it, but even then, no, because it's the elixir of life, so it still costs all your resources anyways. You're this far in. If you're a medic, take it. If you're not, don't. Just don't. Potent poisoner. By concentrating your poisons, toxic components, and you're crafting now chemical and poison trait by any means, the DC is increased by up to four to a maximum of your class DC. Potent poisoner is powerful alchemy. These are the exact same thing. This changes the DC to your class DC. The DC is increased by up to four to a maximum of your class DC. What, what, what is the point? Either it has changed its DC to your class DC or it has changed it by less. The difference being here, one, for some reason, this is dependent upon that one. And two, this doesn't necessarily need quick alchemy. So you could do this with advance and stockpile the potion, the poisons for a day. Other than that, you're having to make them. So you're having to put money into it anyway. So you're that much in the poison then. Yeah. But why don't you just quick alchemy it and do it that. If you're doing poison, you're doing poison. Th this is, this is okay. The thing that it's drawn from though is more powerful. So for some reason, your poisons done immediately are stronger than your poisons that you prepared ahead of time. Like, this upgrade path doesn't make any sense. Uh, for that matter, by the way, going back to the medic, the lesser plague, the lesser anti-plague costs like three. I can't remember if it's gold or copper pieces, but it costs like three. It's not that expensive to just make them. Just make them for the niche time that that, literally that entire class feature is pointless. Extend elixir. When you consume one of your own chemical items that has the elixir and a few traits with an and a duration of a minute longer, the elixir's duration is doubled. All right. It's good. It's good for some mutagenic things and some other buffs. That's really what it is. But it's only when you consume it. So it doesn't help your team 
anywhere near as much as it helps you. Invincible Mutagen. When you're affected by the Juggernaut Mutagen you created, you gain resistance to all physical damage equal to your int modifier. Yes. If you're a Mutagenist, yes. Damage resistance to all physical things equal to your int modifier. Do this with the cheapo one if you have to. Just, j just, just be immune. It's damage resistance. You take less damage. There's no way that's not useful. Uncanny bombs. Increase your bombs range increment to 60 feet. You reduce any circumstance bonus to targets AC from cover by one, and you automatically succeed at a flat check when targeting a concealed creature. Uncanny bombs is really good. 60 foot range. Boom. Their AC from cover is reduced magically. Boom. You ignore concealment. You know where you're going to find a lot of concealment? If you took the thing where your bombs make smoke. Bomb the enemy, put them in smoke, and then just keep bombing them. And they have no clue where it's coming from at this point. Funniest damn thing, because at this point, what, they, they can't see you. They, they don't know where you're bombing. You put them in the smoke already. They have no clue what's going on. You're just bombing the hell out of them. It's funny as hell. Glib mutagen. No, just no. I'm not even going to read all of it. Just, just diplomacy intimidation. It's charisma. You are not a charisma class. You're an int class. You are not taking the mutagen or anything that increases this. Don't do it. That's dumb. Greater Merciful Elixir. When you do Merciful Elixir, tied to the medic thing again, you can now attempt to counteract blinded, deaf, and sickened or slowed. Your medic at this point, okay, fine. It's starting to maybe make a purpose where you waste two or three actions making a potion to cure a debuff off of an ally. Huzzah. True Debilitating Bomb. This is an upgrade to the other debilitating bomb and leads me to believe that the other thing doesn't even really stack because now you have Enfeeble 2, Stupefied 2, or a 15-foot penalty to speeds. For some reason, I would still choose. If I were these three feats in, I would still just keep choosing to dazzle them. Or days, whatever it was. I've forgotten what it is now. These upgrades don't really help as much. The 15-foot penalty to speed is okay. Like, at this point, like, okay, fine. Makes it so you really can't get anywhere. That's pretty cool. But... But it took two, two extra feats to get here. So for two feats for this niche effect now. That being said, though, this one is pretty good. They only avoid the effect. If you instead apply one of the debilitating bomb effects, which was the dazzle thing, then they need to crit succeed, which means they need to roll 20 or have the evasion. Which they don't get until like level 16 or 19. Remember, this is at 14. So you're good. Yeah, this is really good. Make them lose their turns. That, that, that's a good bombing combo right there. Eternal Elixir. When you drink one of your alchemical items as the elixir and infuse, you can make it indefinite. You can only do so if the elixir's level is half your level or lower. If you later consume a different elixir and make it indefinite, the effects of your previous indefinite elixir ends. Yes. Always, you, like if you're doing mutagenous, yeah, make one of them indefinite. Figure out whichever one you want. If you do a lower level one, and uh, or if you do the juggernaut one, if you can find a low level juggernaut one, make sure it's invincible, you always have damage resistance. So yes. And the fact that you have one active doesn't mean that you can't stack a second one as we learned earlier. So, yay. And it says when you drink when you're not chemical arms as the elixir and infuse traits. So we already learned earlier that you can mix two into one. So... I mean, yeah, you have some debuffs to work with. There's going to be a way to min-max that. This is, this is pretty good. Exploited the bomb. It's a bomb that reduces your enemy's resistances, but only for that attack. So it has armor piercing, basically. <clears throat> uh, I would normally say choose, just choose a different element. Just choose one that isn't whatever they have resistance to, and you'll be fine. If you really, really, for some reason, only chose one element earlier, then yeah, it's kind of required at this point. You, just, you should just probably choose a different element. Genius, yes. If you're doing a mutagen, doing one that is kind of based upon like int type things would be useful. Also, it gives you psionics. Cognitive, cognitive mutagen, you get the cognitive int ones bonus to these type of things. In addition, you get telepathy. This one's good. Glib is not. Glib is so not even a good thing. Like, not even a feat. Don't even take that mutagen. That's just dumb. Genius. Genius is already off your int. That's good. Persistent mutagen. Once per day when you consume an alchemical with the infused that you have crafted, you can retain effects until the next time you make your daily preparations. 
And it's kind of really good with the friggin' Eternal Elixir. You could basically have two things last all day if you do it right. It's okay. Improbable Elixir. It's like number of potions equal to your intelligence modifier or lower. You gain uh, of ninth level or lower. You gain formulas to craft them as well. They're now a chemical blah, 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 blah. Yes. If you were doing like an alchemist, what this has done is given you wizard spells. Wizard spells that can be potions now get to be your potions as elixirs, including things like invisibility and other things. That's really useful. By this point, you are, you should have minimum of a five. You should have a minimum of a five mod to your ints. You get five potions. Make them count, but they only need to be ninth level or lower. So anything that could have been turned into a potion would be really good. It'd be really, really good. So take that. Mind blank mutagen. It's really goofy. When you take the serene mutagen, you can be protected from scrying and detection and all this other good jazz. Scrying is a semi-garbage ability. As If you're a DM and your players are smart enough, they won't scry the thing they're trying to scry. They're going to scry something that they know is near the thing they're trying to scry, if that makes sense. If you are a player and the DM is not very good and is needing to railroad the campaign and he needs to say why the enemy has seen you, he is also just going to scry one of your other teammates and not you. you. You know what I'm saying? Like you can always just scry something near the person that can be like resistance to scrying is never really that good. I think earlier I said scrying's not that good. I worded it poorly. Scrying is great. Resistance to scrying is not that good. Trying to resist it is pointless. Miracle Worker. You can administer a true elixir of life to a creature who has been dead for no more than two rounds. When you do, that creature is immediately returned to life with one hit point and becomes wounded one. Yes. Only once every 10 minutes, but a free res if you get to him in two rounds. Yes, this is really, really good. And perhaps this is a reason why you've made a medic. Was to thematically bring people back to life. And it only took you to level 18 to do so. That's not a large investment for a good payoff. Perfect debilitation. When you use debilitating bomb, your target avoids a condition only if it critically succeeds at its saving throw. Didn't we read that already? Didn't we read something that did that same exact thing? The target avoids the effect only if its saving throw is a critical success. When you use debilitating bomb, you said apply one of the effects listed in debilitating bomb. Target avoids the condition the bomb imposes only if it critically succeeds. Only if its saving throw is a critical success. What? Okay, so no, th 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 this feat's pointless. Unless someone has an idea as to why this would be good, other than you get to save two feats, but you have to wait until level 18. This feat is pointless because you can get that you can get that effect at 14 for two feats. So you save on one one. It costs you one extra feat to get it four levels earlier. Unless I'm critically misunderstanding something. When you use a built in bomb, your target avoids the condition and opposes only if it critically succeeds. If you instead apply one of the effects listed in Debilitating Bomb, the target avoids effect only if the result of its saving throw is a critical success. This is a pointless feat. We already have this benefit. Utterly pointless. 20th level. Craft Philosopher's Stone. One, you're level 20. There's not much adventuring beyond level 20. You're going to have, like, a dungeon or two just to really flex your muscles. Got to really flex your alchemic muscles. So, no. It is the thematic. It is the lore thing for an alchemist to have the Philosopher's Stone. What this basically does is it lets you make money and it gives you some, some good heals. But you still have to make the freaking stone. The stone is better at making money, but you're level 20, so you don't need money anyways. It's not that good. 82, 554, 82. If we look at it, what it does. You need an infused true elixir of life for the healing effect of this, by the way. So that would have been advanced or 
uh, quick, which means this only lasts for one day or one round. You can't craft this early. Turns it into an infused elixir rejuvenation. It doesn't require any crafting materials or additional materials. So you've made this item so that you can then afterwards have one day or one round to have a better heal. Not worth it. Or you can use it to make money. You're level 20. At this point, making money does not help you. So as odd as it sounds, you're an alchemist and Philosopher's Stone is pointless. You get this a little too late. At level 18, like if they had two versions of this, like the weak Philosopher's Stone that could upgrade your heals, maybe. And then the true one that made the money at level 20, that would have made more sense. But right now that heal effect comes a little too, a little too little, a little too late. And the money effect is also the only reason why they give it to you is because they know you're at the end of the campaign. Mega bomb. You got an incredibly powerful additive, greatly increasing its area and bomb. Rather than doing a strike, wait, you use an interact action to throw the bomb rather than strike. So you're just, you're not even doing it at someone. And you, so you don't make the attack roll. The mega bomb affects creatures in 30 foot radius burst. So 30 foot AOE centered within 60 feet of you. The bomb deals damage as if each creature were the primary target with a basic reflex save. On a failed save, they take any extra effects that affect the primary target, such as flat-footed from bottle lightning. While our targets in the area take splash damage as primary targets, there is no further splash beyond that. So if you're a bomber, yeah. Basically, this just lets you snap your fingers and portions of the field are just exploding because you're not making an attack roll, which means... You don't have to worry about stupid things like concealment necessarily or cover. You just designate an area and it blows up as long as it's within 60 feet of you. And it just dies, which is amazing. And then lastly, perfect mutagen means you don't get its drawbacks, which finally, at level 20, these, Mega Bomb is the best of these. Perfect mutagen is pretty good. Philosopher's Stone doesn't help you. You're only going to be using this for one dungeon anyways. And the ability to run around snapping your fingers, exploding things is freaking amazing. Uh, perfect mutagen. Doesn't really feel like much, does it? You're doing the same thing you're doing all already. You just get to ignore the drawbacks. But at this point, the drawbacks probably aren't that much of a big deal to you. You're level 20. So this, while mechanically very powerful, is also too little too late. Only Mega Bomb is really good. Because you're going to have that one last dungeon and you're just going to snap everything in, until it dies. That brings us to the end for the alchemist. This was slightly longer than normal because I had to address the core things that were going to be shared by every class at the beginning and some other housekeeping things at the beginning of the video. But thank you all so much for watching. If you found any of my takes entertaining, click that thumbs up button down below. And if you find my way of reading rules, educational, click that subscribe button up above. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.